The aquatic plant hydrilla has been an ongoing issue along the Connecticut River for years. Now, this week, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, they held a meeting to further address the best method, the best way of trying to handle the invasive species. NBC Connecticut's Dave Peck has more. And it's pretty much spread to all of the available habitat that it, it can spread to within the river. They're known as the aquatic hitchhikers. Once hydrilla moves in and covers a cove, it can make it difficult for someone to boat around. And since roughly 2016, the invasive species hydrilla has been causing a ripple effect along the Connecticut River. We have a lot of different uh, plant species that are native to Connecticut, and when hydrilla moves in, it's really aggressive, grows really quickly, and it can push some of those species out. And that can have other impacts on uh, other animal species as well. This week, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, along with other local governing bodies, held the first of three meetings to determine the best way to address the growing hydrilla issue. Last year, they did a bunch of trials in, in tanks to, to look at hydrilla and uh, different concentrations of different chemicals to see if those herbicides can be effective at treating hydrilla. Out of the various options discussed, Keith Hannon of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers named aquatic herbicides as the best selective control option going forward. Really want to just make it clear, though, that the registered aquatic herbicides that are being considered can be used to selectively control invasive plants like hydrilla, and they don't pose significant safety risks. No decisions have been made on how soon those herbicides may be used. In the meantime, Deep says that boaters can do their part to help prevent further spread. The main thing is to clean your boat, drain it of any water in, in uh, any areas that might have water in the boat, and, and to dry it out. In Old Lyme, Dave Peck, NBC Connecticut News.